now the representations are open for questions. Uh, first question is for Gemma. Have you, I'm just curious if the healthy cholangiocytes that are in proximity to the tumor cells are in any way different than healthy cholangiocytes further away? Like, have you done any single cell analysis or staining that'll allow you to see that? Uh, that's a really good question. We haven't done any sort of spatial separation, but that'd be really something to look into for sure. It'd be interesting if they're responding to the tumor cells nearby and changing their behavior in some way. In terms of sort of longer signaling, yeah. you mean distance-wise, yeah. Uh, and then um, for Annabelle, we have um, intracellular activated notch um, IHC, and if that's something you're interested in, we could do the staining really easily. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Uh, I have a question for Pedro. Uh, you showed that um, KLF5 is a chemoresistance marker, but it's uh, specific for GEMSYS. That's the reason why you tested the, then the inhibition with the GEMSYS, or also can be considered for other chemotherapy. And the other question is, uh, any sense uh, in testing the inhibition of uh, KLF5 in, with chemo and immunotherapy? Okay. Thank you very much for this question. So first, um, I only, for a matter of time, I only show GEMSYS here. Uh, we tested also uh, doxorubicin and 5-FU. Uh, we were able to synthesize cells to doxorubicin, but not to 5-FU. So it depends, probably the mechanism of, of induction of cell death by 5-FU. It's not something that is being mediated by KLF5, but for doxorubicin, uh, we know that uh, these, were, these cells were more sensitive to, to um, doxorubicin-induced cell death. And for the chemotherapy, uh, the immunotherapy, actually it's our next step. Uh, uh, basically, uh, there a new paper came out last month in, I think it was lung cancer, in which they show that if you inhibit KLF5 in lung cancer, you can potentiate the response to immunotherapy by modulating a subset of CD8 T cells uh, in the tumor. So we think that we, the inhibition of KLF5 in, in cholangio could also potentiate immunotherapy, and also because I haven't shown it here, but. We observed that the KLF5 knockout cells, they express more cell death receptors. So the trail receptor, the um, TNF alpha receptor. So these cells may increase, if you inhibit KLF5, may increase the immunogenicity of the tumor by presenting more um, antigens that could be potentiating the, the response, for example, to the volume up. So our next steps would be to evaluate that. Thank you. Annabelle, it's a question for you. Um, with regard to the human correlative tissue uh, work, have you had access to not just IPNBs, but uh, billions so of effectively flat dysplasia? Mm. And have you been able to look at the, the geography of expression with regard to how far out within a tumour in human intrahepatic cholangios? And if not, would you like to? Yes, please. <laughs> no, we haven't yet, actually. So the way we came onto the IPMB was a little bit circuitous, which I didn't mention here, and um, was that the mouse model that I talked about before, the KPP Tumor OCD mouse model, had morphology that was very similar to IPMB, and it was Rachel Gast who kind of mentioned that it looked like IPMB, so we went and accessed that. But now that we know that it seems to, we didn't know at the time that we'd get this change in expression of, of notch two um, activation in these tissues, I'm much more interested in kind of going more into the human tissue and trying to establish in lots of different types of malignant, malignant biliary disease where it is. So very good questions and I definitely considered them, but yes, I'd like to get yeah, access to that. <laughs> it looks like that's going to be on my list of TMAs in that case. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Annabelle. Yeah. So we know this uh, notch signaling pathway is very important in the regulation of tumor angiogenesis. So in your tissue, did you see any sort of um, impair the increased notch signaling activation, and you also have a more uh, micro vessel uh, yeah, so formations. Very, very good question, and I can answer that. So, in the um, RNA seq data we got, we I didn't show it here just for time, but we looked at a lot of different pathways that were activated as a result of notch signaling in cholangiocytes, particularly. Uh, and we saw a huge increase in VEGF and lots of other kind of blood vessel development pathways. Also, one of the biggest GO terminology terms was blood vessel development. So it does seem that it's very important and it's correlated. Um, in terms of the staining, so I did a little bit of CD31 and other kind of stains looking at where the vasculature was around the 
the uh, tumours, and you do see an increase. I haven't correlated this to notch particularly. I do see that jagged one is also expressed by the vasculature, so you, and that, that's kind of well known in the literature, I think. Um, so, but in terms of the proximity to the, the tumour and whether that jagged one is actually providing ligand for these cholangiocytes, I don't think so, just because of the, where the receptors are expressed. So at least with regards to NOTCH2, it's only expressed at these cell junctions. And what's important to mention too is the, tish, the images I showed, the 3D images looking through either normal bile ducts or these neoplasm or the cholangiocarcinoma, was actually looking at through um, whole tissue. So we, I took a big bit of uh, a tissue and image through the whole thing. So it's all the different cell types. You have all the patocytes, all the vasculature, all the immune cells. The only cells that stain positive for NOTCH2 were the chondrocytes. So it doesn't seem that it's being provided with this jagged one ligand from anywhere else because it's only expressed by these biliary cells, if that makes sense. But yes, we do see a change in biliary development. I know it's quite tight. The last question, I saw your gene signature. You pick up three of them. You ignore the NOTCH1. So notch signaling is so complicated, one, yeah. two, three, four, that you focus on notch two, but the notch one is upregulated as well. Yeah. So why you leave it alone? Thank you. No, it's perfect. That's a very, very good question. Um, we did look at notch one as well. What was interesting with notch one is it seems to be uh, expressed on the basal membrane. Um, and it's not in all clangiocytes, it's a little bit difficult. And also actually much more uh, expression seemed to be in the surrounding cells. So either in the stromal cells are actually in the hepatocytes as well. So you do have a notch one rich environment. And we know from human patient tissues that you get a huge increase in notch one expression. So I do think it's playing a role, but with regards to the clangiocytes particularly, I think it's notch two that is the major receptor, but I don't argue at all that notch one is involved in, in the cancer formation. I think it is just in this cell, cell specific example, it's notch two, I think. On that, could I ask you? Um, so, do you think which notch receptor and ligands get altered depends on the specific damage that you're inducing? So, is this a response to TAA? So, you're getting notch two upregulation. Whereas, if you were damaging with something else, would you get a slightly different response? How universal? Yeah. That's a great, great question. Uh, we think it's actually the ligands that change in expression rather than the receptor. So what's been interesting is that what I try to show with the images is the notch receptors seem to be there all the time. Whether they're activated seems to be to do with the expression of these ligands. And the ligands we seem accumulated as a response of the hepatic, um, of the oncogenic tumor suppressor loss. We don't actually know what the damage component is contributing yet. Rather other than just producing an inflammatory microenvironment. But it could be, there's something, you're right, between the damage and the NOTCH2 being activated. But we don't see an increase in expression, if that makes sense. So there's not a change in the amount as a result of the damage, just in the activation of this um, receptor. So it's a very good question and something we don't actually know yet, but we definitely want to look into. That, does that answer your question? OK. Or somewhat? So no, sorry, only two. So three and four, at least in, in the clandrocyte cells that we looked at, weren't expressed. I have done staining of the tumors looking at all the other receptors. Uh, notch three is definitely increased and it seems to be expressed by the stromal cells in a big way. So you basically get a sheath of notch three expression around the tumors, but not in the clandrocytes. In the clandrocytes particularly, it's only notch two that we see expressed and a little bit of notch one at the periphery, but there's much more notch one expressed by the surrounding hepatocytes. So I think what, what the kind of big aim or dream would be to understand where all the different receptors and ligands are expressed for all the different cell types and to understand the whole big picture. But here's just a, a tiny sliver of that. Uh, but it's, yeah, really good question. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks very much indeed.